Hello and welcome to another segment in our video series on the behaviorist model. In this video, we look at a very powerful ABA, Applied Behavior Analysis, set of interventions known as differential reinforcement. We'll become familiar with the DRs and learn to use each as we add more tools to our behavior change toolkit. Pause the presentation right now and give your attention to this slide. All right, you've considered the name of the procedure and given it deep and thoughtful reflection. What is it? The DR procedures are some of the most effective, powerful, and positive interventions that we have at our disposal. They're useful with just about any kind of errant behavior pattern, even the most ingrained, offensive, severe, and disordered ways of behaving. They are our go-to strategies when we hear a frustrated teacher or parent say, I've tried everything and nothing works with this kid. We say, have you tried differential reinforcement? One thing to keep in mind when using these procedures, they are powerful in their abilities to change surface behaviors for the better. Surface behaviors are those actions that we can observe. Yes, you remember the behaviorist emphasis on observable and measurable. Behind that surface behavior is a person with feelings, the ability to think and reason, someone with life experiences. Before using these procedures, we want to conduct an FBA, a functional behavior assessment, to determine the source of the force the drive, the reason, the purpose, the function behind this behavior that's being displayed, the why of the behavior. Why, you may ask. There may be other procedures that can reduce the problem behaviors in ways that consider the inner child or the youth. Differential reinforcement is the planned and prepared process of reinforcing an appropriate and desirable behavior in the presence of a stimulus or a set of circumstances that present themselves. While during that same time period, we withhold and disallow the reinforcement of an inappropriate action. That is, we reinforce differentially. Some behaviors get reinforced, while other ones don't. There are many different variations on this theme. The most commonly used of the DRs are shown here. In DRO, the individual is reinforced for restraining, not even exhibiting once the target behavior during a specific period of time that we calculate from some data, and we'll engage in those calculations later. Occurrences of the undesirable target behavior are ignored. Any other actions are okay. The student gets reinforcement at the end of the time period if and when none of the behavior that we find to be socially distasteful is exhibited. This approach can be used with very severe behaviors, a category of behaviors that includes such actions as fighting, cursing, name-calling, threats, talking back defiantly to the teacher, destruction of property, and so forth. In DRI, the individual is systematically reinforced for a behavior that's in opposition to or is incompatible with the behavior that concerns us. So we reinforce and strengthen actions that get in the way of showing the behaviors we dislike. 
for example, we could reinforce following directions because doing so can't be done at the same time as non-compliance. We positively recognize being on task because it would prevent being off task. You know, if you're on time to class, we'll eliminate tardiness. You could reinforce neat work, which then motivates the youngster to display neatness, thus ridding his behavioral repertoire of sloppy work. The same goes for complete work, reinforcing that it nixes the incomplete work assignments. DRA. There are times when we can't promote an incompatible behavior. We can't think of one, or maybe we can do so, but we need to promote a replacement that isn't the opposite, but is more socially acceptable. Uh, thinking of a student who used to say, hey dude, when he wanted someone's attention. Well, instead of the incompatible of not saying those words at all, we replace it with, excuse me, sir. We promote, excuse me, sir, as a more social alternative, socially acceptable replacement for, hey, dude, DRL. This differential reinforcement procedure is used with resistant, habitual actions that are pesky, irritating, but non-hurtful physically or emotionally. Behaviors that don't need to be reduced to zero immediately. This process is directed toward gradually reducing the behavior of concern, that target behavior. We do so by reinforcing progressively lower rates of that action. That's the introductory component to differential reinforcement. In the next segment of our videos regarding the DRs, we'll take a closer look at DRO, differential reinforcement of other behaviors, sometimes known as DRZ, differential reinforcement of zero rates of behavior.